I challenge you to make this dua. Wallah, if the Imam made this dua, you would throw a shoe at him from the back. And the brother, what's this dua? My dress is like the non-Muslim. My food is like the non-Muslim. My schooling is like the non-Muslim. My appearance is like the non-Muslim. My house is exactly like the non-Muslims. My dreams and my ambitions of owning a house and taking my family on a holiday at the end of the year and driving every ounce of my body's ambition is exactly like the non-Muslim. My name was Muhammad, I changed it to Mo. My name was Mustafa, I changed it to Steve. Every, every ounce of me is dripping non-Muslim. Yeah, but brother, Alhamdulillah, I'm a Muslim. The Prophet says, glad tidings, honey and honey and glad tidings to the stranger. Honestly, who feels like a stranger? Bro? Who? Who, bro? You walk into any restaurant, halal, not halal, is a yalla, kullu meshi, brother, bismillah, oh God, brother. We're, 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 we're deep down in our hearts. Where, where? Look, you know what? It's one thing when the brother says to me, listen, I have an addiction and I'm trying to deal with my addiction. Wallahi, I will appreciate it. Look, the man knows he has a problem. No, but I have an addiction and I'm in denial about my addiction and I try to use Dean to justify my actions. Isn't that interesting? So you might tell me, look, brother, you know, maybe the Prophet was going through hard times on his deathbed, on his deathbed, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was going through Sakarat al maut conscious, unconscious, in and out, in and out. So he lost consciousness. Aisha is there, radiallahu ta'ala anha. Then he wakes up. Then he says to Aisha, authentic narrations. He says to Aisha, imagine, Aisha was 18 years old when the Prophet died. How old was she? 18. And Allah called her and the others in the Quran, Allah called them Ummahat al Mu'mineen, the mothers of the believers, meaning they have become haram on every man. And yani once the Prophet dies, وسلم, no one can remarry her. 18 in a world and in a society where the man was everything. Imagine this 18 year old is watching her husband die. At the eight, and she has her whole life that now she knows I'm gonna be alone. I can never remarry after him. So he wakes up from his, you know, he was unconscious. And says to Aisha, How much money do we have? This sunnah no one talks about. Sheikh, please, man, put these stories behind. Let's speak about investments and stocks and let's speak about buying houses, brother. Because in our hearts, we believe that honor, that money will restore the honor of Islam. So she says to my Prophet of Allah, all that we have is seven gold coins. Imagine a man with nine wives. Today, brothers have paid off their houses, paid off. And he's working to pay off the second and the third because brother, I need to leave something for my children, brother. Exhausting his life. Not halal haram. I don't care about halal and haram. But tell me, tell me when the Prophet was dying and there were seven gold coins between nine wives. Is he a man? Sister, sister, you know the one, oh, I wish I was married to him. What Chanel handbag was he going to buy you with seven gold coins? Tell me, man. What hair and makeup studio were you going to go to on a fort fortnightly basis? Tell me. What restaurant were you going to be fine dining in? Tell me, tell me. So he says to her, Aisha, take the seven gold coins and give them in charity now.
You see the sicknesses, my brothers. Just try this. Just try this. Go to a sheikh. Go to a sheikh. Tell him, look, sheikh, there's a religious brother. Don't tell him the prophet because we've been programmed. We've become professional liars, my brothers. Professional, professional. You know, some, some, some brothers would, brother, when you say the name of Rasulullah, oh, I get chills in my spine. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, brother. Subhanallah, his name, it does something to me, you know. And yet you look at him from top to bottom, there's not an ounce of Rasulullah on him, sallallahu Wallahi, just try it. Go to a sheikh and tell him, listen, sheikh, there's a brother we know, he has a big beard. He's dying. And he's leaving his family with nothing. What do you think, Sheikh? What deen is this? What fikr is this? What understanding is this? This is extreme, brother. This is a... Then tell him the Prophet left nine wives with nothing. Ah, but he left them with something far deeper. He left them with Iman and Tawheed and belief in Allah. So he loses consciousness, then he wakes up and he says to Aisha, Aisha, what did you do with the seven gold coins? Seven gold coins, Ya Rasulullah, leave them man, let them be. <laughs> Aisha, 18 years old, she's alone, haram, yani, leave her, Khalas, seven gold coins, yani, they're not going to make her rich. No, yeah, yeah, like it's, it's, no, no, but there's something far deeper. So she says, Oh Prophet of Allah. Look at our mother, man. She said, I held on to them. I didn't give them away in charity. I'm scared. He says to Aisha, Do you want me to die and stand in front of Allah while I still own something from this dunya? Is this how you want me to stand in front of Allah, Aisha? What's, what's going on? My brothers, who's the Rajal? Who? Who's the man? So you might think, look, brother, that, that's, that's, brother, that's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, look, Allah was, no! In Bukhari, the dua of Rasulullah, Allahumma ja'al rizqa ahli Muhammadin kut. Ya Allah, make the rizq of the family. The hadith is in Bukhari. Ya Allah, make the rizq of the family, not just Muhammad. Muhammad and his family, sallallahu alayhi Make the rizq and the provisions of Muhammad and his family the bare minimum. I challenge you to make this dua. Wallah, if the Imam made this dua, you would throw a shoe at him from the back. And look, brother, what's this dua? Ah, because in our hearts, in the sicknesses of our society, a man is determined by his money. 